Hello everyone, today in Command Modern Operations we're going to be taking a look at how to use the Scenarios Event Editor. Now the Event Editor is pretty potent as far as what it's capable of, but it is not the same thing as using Lua or SBR or anything along those lines. So anyway, uh, we've set a basic scenario up. Uh, we have a uh, good old-fashioned India, we've got some good Pakistan right here. We've received some intelligence that a convoy is going to be leaving a Pakistani port. We've set all this stuff up already, and have it nice and hidden. And basically, we're going to want to build in some events to keep track of what our score is during the mission. So to do that, it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to go to Editor. I'm going to go ahead down here to Event Editor. I'm going to click on Events. Now, when you create a new event, the first thing you want to do is give it a name. So for this one is, I'm just going to call it India Destroys Merchant. Something nice and simple like that. I'm going to make sure it's a repeatable event. You can even set it to a specific probability. and You can have a lot of fun with this if you're clever. So there's three pieces to each event. You start with your trigger, which actually activates the event. You have your condition, which is basically a catch, if you want to think about it another way. And then you have what you want to happen when the event is triggered. So let's start at the tippy top. I'm going to add myself edit triggers. I'm going to create a new trigger. We'll set unit is destroyed, create new trigger. Uh, India destroys, I'll just call it merchant destroyed. Merchant destroyed, just like that. So I'm going to set the target side to Pakistan. I'm going to set the target type to surface ship. I can set it to merchant, and I can even set it to specific class and even specific unit. You can get very, very specific if you need to. But in this case, I'm just interested, did I sink a surface ship? I'm going to go ahead and set that just like that. Check, check, check. Press OK. Go ahead and make sure that's selected. Good. Click here click here and then click right here. Now we're good to go. You can add multiple triggers by the way. Merchant destroyed and airplane destroyed or something along those lines. So scrolling down here now we have to add a condition. There's not many conditions. You literally have three. You have is it hostile friendly? You have it did the scenario start and I have a special script. I'm going to do scenario has started. Create new event. Scenario woo. Started. Nice and simple. Close that. You're going to be using this condition a lot. Add condition. So now if a merchant is destroyed and the scenario is started, let's do something. Let's go ahead and add some points. So I'm going to click Create New Action. Add 15 points to India. So now I just set it to India. Go ahead and add 15 points. Press OK. Close the screen. And now I am good to go. So if a merchant gets destroyed and the scenario has started, add 15 points to India. Not bad. Make sure it's repeatable, by the way. Let's go ahead and create another event. I'm do the same thing as I just did a second ago. Edit triggers. I'm going to add a new trigger. This is going to be unit is destroyed. In this one, India loses airplane. Obviously, if they lose a plane, it's going to be a problem. Side India, type aircraft, any, 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 any. Okay. Close that screen. India loses airplane. We'll go ahead and edit actions. We'll do a points action. And uh, lose 10 points, India. Let's set the side to India, and let's set the points to minus zero, one, zero. Ah, we'll set it to minus 10. Perfect. Press OK. Close that screen. Make sure you actually add this action. So now if I lose an airplane and the scenario started, I lose 10 points. Let's add one more. Oh, by the way, we forgot to give this thing a name. India loses plane, and we forgot to set it to repeatable. So watch out for that. Press OK. Good, good, good. And let's add one more event. This time the event, um, max points. Good score. Edit triggers. We're going to go ahead and create a new trigger. And this time I'm going to do side points. Uh, get 30 points. So I'm simply going to select my side. This exceeds 29 points because 30 points would be anything greater than 29. I'm going to press OK. Close the screen. Add my trigger as always set my condition as always, and then I'm going to create a new action called End Scenario. Good. Press OK. Close the screen. End the scenario. And that's it. This does not need to be repeatable, by the way, because if India gets 30 points, the scenario is immediately over. Press OK. So now we're good to go. And that is basically all you're going to be using the events for. Now what you can use, let me go ahead and edit this one real quickly. You can actually set an action, let me go ahead actions real quick, to do a couple more things. For one thing, you could do teleport to area, you could do a message, you can change the status of a mission, say flip it to active or inactive, you can also adjust planes, and again, you can do Lua scripts, which is not in the context of this particular 
particular quick scenario, scenario slash tutorial. So one thing you might want to do is let's go back to our cancel. Let's go to destroys merchant. Edit selected. Let's actually add an extra action here to let us know that a merchant was destroyed. Set the side to the side. Merchant was destroyed. Keep up the good work. So now I can go ahead and create, I'll create one more while I'm at it, right? Create new action. Set it to India again. Press OK. Close it out. Now we can go ahead and uh, make this little message here, merchant destroyed. Add action. So now we get 15 points and it will let us know down here in the message log that a merchant was destroyed. Now if we go over here, we can go ahead and add ourselves that we lost an aircraft as well. And that's it. That's basically the gist of using the event editor. It's a really, really powerful tool. Now, because we have a little bit of time, let's have a little bit of fun with this scenario. I'm going to go ahead and create an area. I'm going to go ahead and define it in here. I'm going to go ahead and create a frick mission real fast. We'll do some MPA. We'll do uh, naval. Press OK. We'll go ahead and get ourselves some bears. That's fine. Uh, we'll do weapon range. I always like to do that. Make sure radar is enabled for this purpose. Yep, looks good. Let's go ahead and unpause time. Here comes all the Tupelo 142s. Once they get into this area, they should start searching for those aircraft. I should say those ships. There they go. Now they're going to start the search process. Zoom in a little bit. Bingo. Gotcha. So we know that the enemy convoy is somewhere in here. We can't identify the individual ships, however. Let's go ahead and speed up time a little more. Oh, looks like we've got a little bit more information. For some reason, this guy just ducked down to 1,000 feet. Looks like there's a total of five ships. Alrighty. Get a little closer because we need to be able to identify them. All right, I got a bad feeling about this because I have a f we have no way to identify which ship is which, so we're gonna get pretty darn close. Let me bring my altitude to about medium here, though, because so I don't want to be so low that I accidentally get surprised. Uh, we still cannot identify these ships, although knowing this scenario, pretty confident that the ones we're looking for. Of course, if this guy gets too close to if there's an escort, it's gonna end very badly for the Tupolev 142. Can he get close enough without getting shot down? Keep in mind, this guy or one of these guys down here is looking up at him going, what is that airplane that's flying over us right now? And I don't think we're going to be able to get a solid ID. At least not safely. I have a feeling my tuple of 142 is about to get shot down. Ooh, no, looks like we're going to get clean. All right. I'm going to go ahead and set him back to auto. Let's set it right over here. Actually, I'm going to do something like this. All right, let's prepare our attack. Let's say strike ships. Let's go grab all my, I'll do sections of threes. We'll grab all of those ships. They're good to go, they're good to go. I don't need any of that off axis stuff. I'd rather they just literally just queue up and uh, wreck the thing. All right, we'll leave all those other details to other details. I believe they're coming out of Guajara. Here they go. MiG-27s, I believe. And we just got something launched at us, so we're actually able to identify them anyway. <laughs> we're great. So one of the problems we're going to have here is I have a feeling we're going to lose some of these MiG-27s. That always ends up happening. All right, they're coming down. Speed up time a little bit here. Getting into range. Fingers crossed that they employ the appropriate amount of weaponry here. One of the problems with attacking large ships with tiny laser-guided missiles is they don't do very much damage. Oops, sped up time a little bit too aggressively. There we go. 5X. Looks like we hit one of them pretty good. I'm sure this one of these is probably... Oh, we've identified them. Ah! So we were able to identify... Oh, he's launched a missile. Here comes the next round of MiG-27s. Oop, jammer's on. All right, swinging around. Here comes the next group of MiG-27s. Oop. 
That ship's probably not doing so good. If any of these are oil tankers, are really going to be miserable. I wonder if this guy's even launched a missile yet. Keep in mind this is a night operation, so it's going to be very, very difficult. I mean, you'll see the bright white light from the motor from the missile, but we have no other guarantees there. Alright, next group swinging in. Probably going to take their shots now. We know that one's sinking. Notice they're completely ignoring these other two ships. They're probably just too large to do any real damage to. Check our message log real quick. And it looks like we haven't gotten any new ones. Nope. Oh, what just happened? Hey, a merchant was destroyed. Keep up the good work. Hey, look at that. So unfortunately, I think we only got one. That is quite the bummer. But that was to be expected. I don't think we're going to manage to uh, sink another one over time like we did enough flooding damage. Fast forward time just in case here. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. No, I don't think so. Let me grab one of those two blows real quick. If you'd be so kind as to fly over there and get them back on radar again. We can at least identify which one's hurting pretty bad. No, it's safe to say that one's hurting pretty bad, but we don't, without looking at it, we're not going to be able to confirm its actual damage. All right, so anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at our scoring to make sure everything worked correctly. Now, it looks like our current score is 15. If we go under losses, we went through 30 of the AS-10s, and we managed to sink one container vessel, which makes me feel better. Oh, it looks like they actually did take a shot at us, which doesn't surprise me. Going to the scoring log, you'll notice this was automatically changed. If we go to the scoring graph, you can see our graph score improved. Now, had we lost an airplane, this would have gone probably ziggy-zag all over the place, but um, we actually did a pretty good job. We certainly scared them, <laughs> to say the least. I'm actually going to quickly switch to uh, Pakistan, and we'll take a look to see how we're doing here. No, I think that one's hurting pretty bad. I'm actually going to detach you from the group and send you back home, because clearly you're hurting pretty bad here, and it's much better to preserve the ship. Now, if we attacked this tanker, attacked the LPG tanker, we've probably been a little more successful here. But let's see, are you actually in fire? You're flooding? Is the flooding getting worse or better over time? Mm, it's staying about the same. Oh, this ship might actually sink. It just has to get here. Okay, now we got to see what happens here. Oh, we've identified something. Uh, that flooding damage is getting worse. Uh-oh. Oh, I think India actually may have sunk too here. The poor damage control crew is working as hard as they can to preserve that ship. Oh, look at that flood. Oh, oh they just made some headway here. Just have to get to the port. Meanwhile, those other ships... Uh, keep in mind, we are rearming those MiG-27s right now. So they might show back up again. Oh, this is not looking good. 72% damage. Oh, boy. Is this ship gonna make it? I th it made it. Wow, that was close. So our ship is all the way down to three knots. But incredibly, it was able to actually stop the flooding. So I'm guessing this guy's feeling pretty confident right now <laughs> after taking that much abuse. We're actually going to cheat a little here. I'm going to go ahead and move this ship a little bit closer. Because I want to see what the restore time on this particular ship is going to be after that much damage. Might as well, right? Survey says... Almost there. Shunk. Alright, let's take a look. 12 minutes, no, it's not 12 minutes. Skip 12 minutes ahead, though. All right, 25 minutes. I don't think that's going to take 25 minutes. But anyway, that's beyond the scope of the scenario. All right, hopefully this helped you out. Again, the scenario editor is pretty straightforward. That teleporting option is kind of neat because you can have a button where when it randomly decides, it can teleport everybody to one side of the screen. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments. Otherwise, see you later.